Hello, so this is my uh, run through of uh, the talk I'm going to give um, for the CoinOp conference uh, happening on the 24th of November in London, um, which is a, uh, a meeting of uh, game developers, both blockchain and non blockchain, and also um, investors. So um, I'm giving sort of a sort of market uh, sector sort of overview. Um, and this is my sort of technical run through, which I'm just videoing and probably will put up on YouTube if it's, if it's any good. Um, okay, so I was thinking quite a lot about how to, how to sort of give this talk. Um, and obviously in a, in a uh, period of, of uh, high energy <laughs> and uh, uh, exuberance and all that sort of stuff, um, I kind of, kind of just thought I might be interesting. It might be interesting to take a sort of contrarian approach because that's what blockchain is all about, isn't it, really? Um, so um, I kind of thought, uh, at least for the for sort of the framing of, of what I'm trying to say here, um, which would be the majority of the talk, um, let's let's take the view of curb curb your enthusiasm about blockchain gaming. So um, you know everyone in the space has seen that the, the you know the dial has moved incredibly quickly, um, even in the last sort of couple of couple of months, um, and now pretty much it looks like everyone is looking at blockchain games in in, in a serious manner. Um, so let's start off and think about three reasons why you should not be making blockchain games. And let's follow that up with two reasons why you should not be investing in blockchain games. And uh, let's see uh, we'll see where that takes us. And then uh, maybe um, we can uh, yeah, have, have another view um, after that. Anyway, um, so some reasons why we shouldn't be making blockchain games. So, so the first thing is really um, you're not making a game. And, and this is sort of clearly a sort of a, a crunch point between um, sort of uh, game makers and, and uh, people currently making blockchain games. And there's lots of um, criticism that these are not fun, these are not games, and lots of um, startups now are saying, well, you know, the current the current sort of titles are not are not, are not fun, and we're going to make fun blockchain games, and that's what's going to make uh, that's what's going to make the difference. Um, and I kind of think that is uh, um, you can understand why that's the case. You know, the one point of the games is, is, is all about fun, and fun is a sort of key component of, of games. Um, but, but but fundamentally, I think where we are at the moment, at least, and 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 really um, really, I think for the future. Um, if, if when you're making a game um, that's using blockchain in, in any way, um, but but it's certainly one with sort of sort of in-game currency and, and, and tokens that sort of stuff. Is, is you're not you are making a game, but but more importantly, you're making a an economy. Um, and and really, you know, obviously the best thing is to is to sort of think about those two things together and make and sort of have a sort of holistic sort of agreement between between what's going on there. But but um, you know, of, of the two things, the the economy is. Is sort of the, sort of the vital thing here. This is this is what blockchain gives us. that's different. If we're just making fun games, we'll, we're making fun games for like thirty five years. Um, that's not the exciting thing. And um, the exciting thing here is now we now have blockchain economies. Um, so you're not making a game. You're making a, a, a economy which will probably be highly unstable. So let's look at some examples. So going going back in sort of prehistory of blockchain games. So 2019, 2020, there was this game EOS Knights it came out of a small South Korean publisher. It was actually a mobile game, like an idle RPG, pretty nice. EOS Knights. Um, you know, I personally kind of played it quite a lot. You know, it was sort of an idle game, so you played it all the time. Uh, you had these three characters. You sort of you sort of ground out materials. You sort of um, you know, got better gear. You sold it on the marketplace. All the usual stuff we expect. Um, you know, nice game. Got up to six thousand daily actually unique wallets. Um, and then you know, pretty much at that point, sort of sort of collapsed. Um, and and effectively, you know, by by the start of twenty twenty, um, had gone down to zero usage. So so lots of reasons why this kind of stuff happens. And to some degree, um, in sort of late twenty. 19, the EOS blockchain came under a lot of um, uh, congestion, and uh, and so sort of you needed to stake ridiculous amounts of EOS in order to get any sort of bandwidth on, on the blockchain. So there were some sort of structural issues there, um, but, but the, the game had already peaked um, pre previous to that point. So as, as tended to happen uh, with stuff on EOS back in the day, um, and, and happens now with all blockchains, is there were loads of bots operating. So obviously trying to sort of grind out value, working out the best meta. Um, so, so that stuff was sort of happening, and when that sort of stuff happens. Um, and the developer can't sort of handle what's going on there. The, the, the economy generally sort of sort of explodes at some point, um, and 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 that's sort of what happened with EOS Knights, and actually a few other EOS games at that period of time. Another sort of game we can look at, a bit different. Uh, My Crypto Heroes, um, still alive to some degree. So this is this is um, Japanese developer from Japanese developer um, uh, Double Jump uh, Tokyo. Uh, again, pretty hardcore sort of RPG. Really nice though. Um, some some really cool stuff there. Artwork's amazing. Um, so. What happened start of 2019? It was it was um, you know the, the the most popular blockchain game got um, certain peaks over 6,000 
daily extra unique from wallets is running on the Ethereum blockchain when, when gas fees weren't such a thing. Um, you know, got up to the uh, start of 2020. You know, it was the most popular blockchain game, you know, kind of 4,000 daily extra unique wallets that will give or take a bit of volatility there. And then um, getting to 2020, um, gas fees uh, really, really um, start to clunk in um, and, and the game effectively becomes sort of uneconomic to, to play um, on chain. Um, and and uh, you see by sort of the, the sort of mid 2020 when, when the DeFi um, summer is coming in, um, the game basically goes to zero. Again, there were some other issues around um, what the developer was doing there and they were sort of um, uh, handing over um, sort of sort of sort of control really of, of the game to the landowners in there. I'm not sure the landowners necessarily wanted that. It wasn't quite clear to me. There was a lot of sort of governance um, sort of, sort of uh, re request for that. Um, but they basically they tried to sort of hand it over and, and sort of um, move on to other projects. And then they, then they sort of tried to get people to reuse reuse the assets in, in other games and stuff. Never really worked out. We can also see, you know, they did try to reboot it on the Polygon blockchain. Obviously doesn't have the same level of gas fees. Um, that's happened in 2021. Um, you know, it's got up to, you know, about a thousand, um, but, 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 you know, um, even with these sort of serious projects from serious developers who, who, who you know, know what they're doing, you know, certainly when something has declined and people have started to lose money, um, very, very hard to resurrect these um, these, these projects. Um, I guess, uh, you know, a, a more recent example, Crypto Blade, so this is running on the Binance Smart Chain. You know, could, again, could argue, you know, is this a game, basically, you're, you're buying some NFTs, you're, you're then doing some very basic sort of battles. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, the most basic battles sort of... Sort of um, you, you can do your you're sort of getting um, XP to sort of level these things up, um, uh, but mainly you're you're earning the skill token. So the skill we can see here. So this is the in, the blue line is the is the number of users. So we can see it hit over four hundred thousand daily active unique wallets um, in the start of uh, August. But we can also see basically what you, the only reason you're playing this game because it really wasn't fun. It really wasn't sort of a well crafted game. Um, was you were basically playing the game to mine out this skill token. The skill token, again, obviously running on Binance Smart Chain. Um, so we can see here the skill token actually peaked at $142 um, compared to, uh, which is sort of uh, uh, towards the end of July. It started July at, at $1. So we can kind of see see what kind of velocity was happening here. And interestingly, sort of the game, the, the token price peaked, um, you know, quite a couple of weeks before the actual DAUs peaked. And then if you look into transaction volumes and that sort of stuff, um, you can kind of see the the, the bots were, were sort of already out of the system and, and and were cashing in their 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 skill tokens, you know, in the, in the end of July, um, while new players were still coming in, and, and obviously, um, we can see sort of the, the, the price uh, was down more than half um, at the start of July, and then by the end of September had had, had really come down a lot, and basically the game by that stage was was was, was sort of finished. Again, supposedly they're trying to sort of resurrect it, but 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 clearly, um, you know, a lot of people have been burnt by this, and and very unlikely to to go back to playing these games. So you, so you have very um, unstable economies and they, uh, you know these are you know, sort of old games i suppose and, and games from inexperienced teams but we can look at something like you know nba hot shot uh, top shot sorry from dapper labs you know really well recognized team raised tons of money um you know this was a project at the start of 2021 that really sort of exploded so here we're looking at again daily active unique wallets um, and we can see you know sort of not very much the start of january picks up february march um, really kicks in and, and then by sort of uh, end of eight, end of april you've got these you know um uh, what's that 100 and 180,000 daily extra unique wallets obviously depends when they're particularly sort of dropping these um these uh these packs in particular but again you know this is a project that went from a market cap um of about two billion dollars down to um, i think it's been as low as 500 million um now about 800 million so so that has sort of recovered uh, and um maybe that's sort of the um the cachet of having a sort of you know a, a proper well-funded team behind it who are clearly sort of building out stuff on it and i think to a degree they were surprised as, as anyone that this thing exploded but but basically you still have um, you know, lots of uh, community um, sort of unhappiness around the fact that the people had a lot of money sort of locked in the system. They couldn't get it out by the time they sort of um, could get it out. Um, uh, the, the price of these things had sort of dropped. So, so you know, all that sort of sentiment stuff uh, it does matter. And even in something, you know, something as, as, as sort of a, as I think as solid as, as Blanco's block party, something I really spend a lot of time on, um, as you can see from these sort of graphs. Um, so this is looking at the uh, the return on investment if you bought the um, if you bought every sort of Blanco, uh, if you bought one of every Blanco that came out um, at, at the price at which it was available in the in the shop, and then this is looking at the comparing that ROI to the floor price, so the cheapest Blanco. Um, uh, if you had if you had if you bought one of every Blanco and then, and then adding all that up and, and comparing that to the the cheapest Blanco of all those Blancos, what would have happened? So um, we would have reached over five hundred percent return on investment um, in. Mid September, um, but the problem was the market there wasn't 
fully sort of a liquid. So not all, not all countries could buy, not people from all, not all countries could buy and sell. Um, so, so you sort of had a run up because people could buy and not sell, and then everyone be, became able to sell. And then of course what happened was was, was the price of everything um, came crashing back down again. So it's still hit and sort of the deer of 100%. So, so in a sense, you know, you're still up 100%, um, but equally people who bought in the run up um, to 500%, obviously were, were sort of down. It's sort of recovered again now. Um, but but still sort of quite a ways off where it was before, and, and again all this sort of stuff is, is sort of, sort of um, you know, bad sentiment. So this is just just to say that yeah, there are some real there are some really inexperienced projects with the whole thing. Probably you know, to some degree was 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 just so ill thought through. It probably was a scam, uh, crypto blades. Um, there are ones that are proper projects where where it just the economy just sort of um you know it takes on a sort of will of its own. But, that, but the developer sort of sort of gets blamed for that. Um, you know, and we can sort of look back in, in, in the past. And I think obviously there's been lots of mention about are these things Ponzi scheme, is Axie Infinity a Ponzi scheme? So I, I have spent a bit of time researching, you know, what is it actually a Ponzi scheme? So um, obviously a lot of these things in history, the first, it's called Ponzi scheme because there was Charles Ponzi. Um, so a uh, American Italian uh, between the, the two world wars. Um, and he actually had a sort of, you know, he was like a, yeah, he wasn't, he probably was a scammer, to be honest, but he did have some sort of um, scheme here. So he was going to arbitrage international reply coupons, which was a way of sort of sending stuff through the post um, to, um, to and from America. And basically worked out that you could buy these things very cheaply in Italy and, and um, then redeem them in the States and basically get the kind of stamps and then sell the stamps on. So he reckoned get 400% return on that, but obviously he needed to raise capital in order to go and buy these things in Italy and then ship them to, to the States and then recover them. Um, so he promised uh, to get capital. He promised people fifty percent profit within forty-five days, um, or hundred percent profit within ninety days. So you know, I guess you could argue whether he was a he was a um, you know a legit businessman at any point or not. Um, he ended up um, going on after the after his prison deal here to uh, to try and sell swamp in um, in Florida. So so probably on the scammy side, you would say. Um, and part of the reason, you know, part of the reason is is when people offer people get offered these things and it doesn't sort of break down straight away is the human nature sort of kicks in. So whether or not someone's offering Ponzi scheme, it's human nature that allows that allows that sort of um, situation to to develop. So you can kind of see, you know, by you know just how, how quickly the, these these sort of things sort of take off. And even if it was a legit um, business in the first place, you know, very quickly it becomes, you know, sort of unsustainable. Um, uh, similar thing, you know, Bernie made off again, you know, <laughs> incredible, you know, sixty five billion dollar um, uh, Ponzi scheme. Um, you know, but he started out, um, you know, as a, as a sort of a proper trader. He was actually quite innovative. He was actually uh, chairman of the, the Nasdaq Stock Exchange, one of the first people to do a lot of sort of computerized trading. Um, you know, was one really one of the big liquidity providers for the Nasdaq Exchange back in the 70s and uh, and, and 80s. Um, and, and it almost became so much money was being offered to him that that, that the sort of um, opportunities that he potentially had been doing to make money um, just didn't work anymore at the scale he was offering at, and, and then the whole thing sort of became a Ponzi scheme. Obviously, arguable about whether it, he he. Wanted that from the start. Um, obviously, he knew it was for a long period of time before it, before it finally went bust. Um, but this is the sort of thing, you know, I'm just saying that there are scams out there, but equally there are um, things that <laughs> when you're offered so much money um, or so much money piles into a project, then, then sort of human nature takes over and these things sort of become Ponzi schemes um, to some degree. Because the interesting thing about blockchain projects that we always forget is there is no centralized <laughs> sort of sort of, um, sort of of agent here. So if it's a Ponzi scheme, it's sort of the Ponzi, the Ponzi scheme is the whole community because it's not just the money's not going to Axie Infinity, the money's going to the people who are buying and selling um, uh, uh, NFTs or, or, or tokens or whatever it is. So, so I guess in, in the sense of any of these things are Ponzi schemes, then we're all part of the Ponzi scheme. Um, Okay, uh, so this is this is you know you're not in control of, of the of the economy, but but you will get blamed for everything. So you know as much as anything, everything one hopes to be running a fully decentralized DAO where all the decisions are made by by token holders. You know clearly we're nothing not there yet, and even in that situation, everyone will blame um, the developer. You know, so the thing always is you know when tokens uh, um, and as soon as it's when so as soon as the token's out, it's when moons are. So so you basically you basically will get pushed all the time um, around token uh, and and why is it not on Binance and all this sort of stuff um, and. You know, that's just if you want to go down this route, that's 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 what you have to live with, you know. Um, and I think you know the brutality of this market is is you know it's it's really hard to get your head around unless you've been in it for a while. You know, you know these are these are projects where individual people can put a hundred million dollars into your economy in a second. Some people, someone can remove a hundred million dollars from your economy in a second. Um, you know, you are not in, you are not in control of that by any means, and it's very hard to sort of even model what's going to happen there. Clearly, we've had lots of kind of um, uh, headlines in in the free to play mobile space, where I spent sort of the last uh, ten years with, with sort of kids using their parents' credit cards to, and, and buying too many Smurfberries. Well, this is you know this is entirely different sort of headlines when people literally lo lose their life savings in your game. You know, you are the one who's going to get blamed, no matter that it, that it is 
um, blockchain. You know, and you know, the, Tyson, the famous Tyson meme, meme is, you know, you can model this stuff to, to, to be blue in the face, um, but when you get punched in the face, you know, these things are are super serious. You know, and there's, you know, I'm not, well as we get to, there are some positive things about that. But 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 yeah, as a game developer developing a product, you will, you will never come across the sort of serious implications of doing this sort of stuff. Um, okay. I mean, even we see this sort of thing, uh, actually. So this is a smooth love potion. This is a utility potion. This is supposed to be a a sort of um, um, you know non-volatile uh, sort of sort of token that's that's sort of you know used to pay people out and, and used to burn burn to breed. Um, and even there, you see massive volatility. The first spike there happened because of Fortran group decided to pump and dump. Nothing to do with Axie, um, <laughs> but uh, that's what happened. Um, and, and sort of the other you know the other ones coming um, further down the line. Um, but this is this is this is supposed to be a token that you do not buy for speculative reasons. That's very clear. But that's what happens, you know. And you have to build a sort of as a community, a, a, a sort of a product that can deal with that. And then, of course, when that sort of stuff happens, then you get people doing this sort of thing. Um, and, you know, a lot of um, discussions about whether you know I think this is a good thing or, or a bad thing. So this is looking at the different levels of um, sort of Axie skill. Um, uh, so so your ranking in Axie Infinity and and how much you can earn um, at various points. Uh, depending on what the price of the SLP price is, and then they, they link that back to the um, average daily wage in the Philippines. The orange line and the and the blue line is the minimum wage. So there's all this sort of stuff, you know, it's sort of also pointing out. Well, if the price goes goes too low, then people aren't can't earn any money anymore. Um, so so I'm not I'm, saying, I'm not saying whether that's a good analysis or not, but 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 suddenly you know certain games in this blockchain space, you know, that's the sort of level of scrutiny that you are being subjected to for things that are just totally um, outside your control uh, to a large extent, I suppose. Okay, um, something I think is massively over underestimated for game developers who have pretty much you know know how to make games. They they raise money to make the game. They put the game out and then they start to earn money. Um, you know, you will not make you will not make enough money in the early stages. Um, is, is my sort of view on this, particularly as we get more um, as games projects get require more capital up front. Um, so how does this happen? Um, so very simple, obviously uh, in terms of NFT sales. At the moment we have something like this. Epic Games releases some content in in Fortnite and, and, and players buy it and Epic gets the money and then um, some more content comes out and players buy the content and Epic gets the money. Um, pretty straightforward that that's how, how, get, how games company make money, they, they make content, they try to get as many players to spend as much as possible. Um, but this is a bit different when we have in our NFT space, I'm not dealing with um, cryptocurrencies here, but if you're thinking about NFTs, you know, a player buys something from, from you as a company, a primary sale, so that's all sort of good. Um, but then um, that uh, another player buys that um, item, so they're not buying a, not a primary sale from you, so you've missed out one primary sale there. Um, most of the money goes between the two players, and you get maybe um, a, a small percentage, ten or five, five or ten percent. So you basically missed out, you know, you basically missed out ninety percent of, of 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 revenue there. Okay, but it's nice, you know, another player will come along and, uh, and buy that um, item again. Again, you've missed out sort of a primary sale there, but you got a, a, a little cut, and then we can obviously, you know, this is gonna 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 keep going for as many times as these things are are um, are, are traded. So. You know, you do. You, in some some senses, this is good because you're making money from every transaction. But in other senses, it, you know, it will depend on each game, and, and there's various models you can do. Uh, but you, but clearly, um, you're you're not gonna have um, the same level of primary sales. Um, I think that that seems to me pretty pretty clear. Um, so so we've shifted from a direct sale revenue business to to something that's margin driven around transactional. Um, sort of, sort of uh, cut, and even you know when it gets to something like Axie Infinity, where Sky maybe it itself isn't <laughs> generating any revenue from the game because um, it's all going into a treasury run by the run by the um, run by the community. So I mean that's another thing entirely. But so this is almost embarrassing to show. But this is some very basic modelling I did um, of just looking at how many transactions you would need to sort of get back to um, uh, the sort of dilution of primary sales, and it depends a little bit on how many primaries of, of how much. What percentage of, of your sort of primary sale base you think you're going to lose um, by having um, tradable assets? Um, so this this sort of um, you know, doesn't really model that to be to be totally frank. But what's interesting is um, this sort of looks to see this sort of has a sort of an, a a, 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 um, a random a random element of whether the NFT price goes up or down. And obviously, it's sort of the clear thing. There's two things that are very clear here: is you want a lot of transactions and you want your NFT price to be going up. Because uh, the more transactions you have, the more um, sort of the, the small percentage that you're getting is, is, is becoming more valuable. You know, you're getting more of that, and then as the NFT price goes up, your your the percentage you're getting is bigger. But really, what you need to have here, this is why it goes back to the sort of unstable economies. You need to have an economy that is growing, and NFT prices, if they start going down, so the worst case scenario, basically, <laughs> you sort of you know um, 
you you, you just n never get back to um, the revenue you'd otherwise get because you're getting a tiny you're getting a tiny percentage of, of a smaller um, um, kind of um, uh, smaller take uh, uh, smaller ticket price um, you know even in the average case so this is where the price might be sort of randomly going up um, but you're just not you never get enough back uh, to, to deal with your primary sale so you really need your NFT prices to be going up quite considerably and even in that case you know it's basically you know you're looking like between 10 and 15 transactions you to get back um, uh, to, to what you would have got otherwise you know if you can keep doing that then it suddenly becomes very very profitable um, but I think people need to think about you know what how much they think they can raise from primary sales and how they're going to sort of run these transactions in the long term um, and that'll be an interesting sort of place to find a balance but but I definitely think you know running AAA teams of hundreds of developers over many years to make a AAA game um, you know that, that's that, that I just I, you know I'm well it seems like lots of blockchain games at the moment are raising lots of money um, I don't think that's a great sort of sustainable model myself. Um, okay, so two reasons why you shouldn't be investing in blockchain games. So um, the moment everyone is investing in blockchain games, and I mean everyone. So basically everyone who can buy um, uh, a, a token, even on a secondary marketplace, even on through Uniswap, is sort of investing. There, and it's sometimes funny to, 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 to talk to investors who, who supposedly invested in Axie Infinity's first round. Um, and you talk to the Sky Mavis guys and they're like, mm, uh, who are they? Um, so everyone thinks they're an investor. And if you look down some of these portfolio decks, then basically do, all, all it really means is they bought a token at some stage. Not very clear when. Um, so everyone in blockchain is investing. Um, Money is basically a commodity, as we'll sort of get on to. Um, uh, so, so, you know, people don't, it's very easy to raise money. You know, in, in the, the, the talent in this room, we could easily raise, you know, tens of millions of dollars on a probably, you know, hundreds of millions of dollar valuation to make a blockchain game. I mean, it's just, it, it, you know, it, to some degree, it's, it's slightly farcical, um, the sort of startups and, and the money they're raising. But but it's not just all, you know, it's not just one-offs. That's, that's how the scene is. Um, and the other sort of clear thing is, particularly when it comes to crypto investors, Traditional investors cannot move as fast as they do. I mean, they don't do any due diligence. They don't really care. All they care about is when they get their, their tokens and when they can sell them. So, so you have a lot of money it's moving moving at ridiculous ridiculous speeds, um, and, and that's you know, just you have to live with it. So, you know, so far um, we're almost five billion dollars. This is like some stuff I've been tracking. So, um, give or take a little bit, but five billion dollars I've tracked into the into the industry since 2018. Three point six of that has come in 2021. Um, most of the you know, majority of that has come through sort of what I would call traditional VCs. Um, you know, we've got some some companies have started to raise fairly significant amounts now. So Forte, nine hundred million dollars, so rare. Um, uh, you know, Forte is a platform. So rare is just sort of a game at the moment. Um, you know, almost eight hundred million dollars. Dapper Labs is is the blockchain. Six hundred million mythical games of platform two seventy. You know, we know all these people are. You know, some of them in the room. Probably all these people are raising again at the moment. You know, certainly some of them are. Um, so, so there's just a lot of money sort of floating around. Um, and, you know, this just kind of shows the same thing. It's kind of funny here to see in the in the far left hand side the, the, the ICO boom that sort of worried us all in 2018. All this sort of crazy stuff going on. Sort of, um, you know, we, we, you know, you could argue which are the crazy years, <laughs> which are the crazy valuations here, uh, when, you, when you could raise you know 20 million dollars off a white paper compared to um, you know some of these other. Uh, companies who I'm sure are doing a bit more than white paper, but, but maybe it's a white paper plus a bit of reputation. I don't know. Um, we, we will see how this sort of stuff pans out. Um, and and you know, going back here, so so I've, I put 2018, 2019, 2020, um, and then compared to the months in 2021, so you can just see the velocity um, that's going on there in terms of money raised. So um, so far in November, um, over a billion dollars, uh, mainly forte. Um, and again, this is sort of comes back to this, this sort of this sort of this, this, the speed of crypto investing. So this is looking at the number of deals in the year. Um, again, this is sort of sort of my own data, so um, give or take a bit on the, on the accuracy. But the number of number of deals in a year, horizontal, and then vertical, the number of um, investors. So there's a bit of double counting on the, on the vertical scale, but you can just see how things have changed. So not only are there many more deals in 2021, um, the number of investors is, is also um, is you know, much much higher. Um, and you know, not this is just sort of one actually that I saw last week, uh, and actually I did double check, and this was this was the deal I could find with the most investors in it. Um, so block blockchain space, I know some people in the room have invested, so I'm not <laughs> I'm not casting assertions here, but it it sort of just goes to show quite the sort of weirdness of what's going on here. So they they raised a fairly small amount of money, three point seven five million. Um, Sixteen investors, uh, VC investors, shown on this uh, slide here. So the majority of these, in fact, all of them are are sort of crypto investors, uh, come out of the sort of crypto space. Obviously, some fairly large ones there, Animoca, in, in, you know, uh, Infinity, and Spartan, sort of well known. Some other ones also um, sort, of, sort of well known with with, with reputation. Um, but as well as these sixteen VCs, there's also eight angels. Again, some in the room um, to raise this fairly small amount of money. So, so you sort of have this problem now. 
that you know everyone everyone's got a bit of money to invest but actually you know if you think about how investment sort of actually works you know this these early stages everyone's getting a tiny amount and and, and um, probably everyone, everyone, you know, you have dilution in the same way, but um, you don't. No one really owns enough of what's going on here for it to be sort of um, sizable in, in the sense of how VCs used to work. Um, and, you know, and we kind of see this now, you know, with this particularly around valuations. So, so you know, I'm sure it's going to get even more insane. You know, I don't think this is <laughs> this is stopping anytime soon. Um, but risk reward is sort of out of kilter, and this is definitely difficult. I think for the traditional funds. You know, there's a great great um, blog post by um, uh, Fred Wilson from a USV. Um, on um, how particularly early stage startups um, will not re will not be able to return their fund um, just because because they will just get too diluted again. I mean, it's a bit more focused on on equity than than tokens, um, but but uh, you know these sort of things, this sort of risk reward you know mechanic now um, is is really sort of out of kilter with the things we've seen before. Um, and yet and yet and yet. Um, so three reasons you should be making blockchain games, blockchain game economies at least. So, you know, it's pretty clear blockchain game economies will change the world. Um, you know, we've not really been able to say, well, I guess people have said that about games in sort of some sort of sort of um, community based um, way or, or, you know, MMOs or, or building relationships um, online. Or there's lots of things games have been sort of great, sort of good, good at and people can make the argument for. But, but you know, without getting too sort of massive messianic about it, you know, do you want to reshape the global economy for the better? And, and clearly that's what we've, we've already seen. And clearly, as, as we see more of, of these sort of games, coming out and be big economies and people be able to earn um, you know, real value in these games for, for months and years, um, then this is going to be a big um, shift for global economies and a big sort of challenge in, in many ways for, for, for national economies and, and even sort of international um, organisations. But, but you know, this, this is sort of, sort of where, where things get serious for gaming. So, so you know, if you, wanna, if you don't want to get involved with that and you want to just kind of go ahead and make nice little um, free to play uh, mobile games or, or nice little games for Apple Arcade or whatever, you know, off you go, you know, that's fine. But, but this is an opportunity for people who, who, you know, I think we all maybe to some degree egotistically, we do want to change the world um, uh, for the better. So, you know, this stuff is all over Axie Infinity's Twitter feed. I just pulled some of it. This is a really old one. Um, this is one of the first ones that got famous where this guy playing Axie Infinity, I think this is 2019 even, maybe 2020, um, bought this little tricycle um, in the Philippines for, for earning the game and he sort of tricked it all out. Um, and, you know, that was the first when we started to see a lot of stuff in the Philippines. You know, this one, um, this was just last week. This sort of uh, <laughs> this car sort of decked out in the in the Axie. Um, I don't even know actually quite what country that one's in. Um, but then this, this is, doesn't seem like much, but it's, but it's really fascinating. I think what's happening in the Philippines in terms of stuff like the AXS token and the SLP token becoming like like uh, sort of national economies. Um, sorry, national um, currencies. So obviously, they're, you know, they're cryptocurrencies. But this is like a coffee shop, and you can buy your whatever you want to buy your your your, your pastries and your coffee um, uh, using using cryptocurrencies. And you know now we have these uh, you know the, the Ronin wallet is a mobile wallet, um, and we've also seen sort of people uh, doing rental uh, you know uh, house rentals using uh, AX AXS tokens. Um, and and you and you just kind of see now people are earning stuff in games and they're buying their sort of day to days with it. This stuff is never it's not going into fear at all. It's just sort of it's remaining in crypto land. Um, and yeah, this is just going to be more and more of that. Obviously, obviously, you have to be a certain type of game in a certain type of location to, to have that sort of um, uh, sort of power. But clearly, this is what's going to be happening. And, you know, what governments think about it, um, we, we'll wait and see. Uh, but you know, <laughs> I'm not sure the Philippine, Philippines government could, could really stop it at this stage. Um, and, and this is like a really, you know, again, it's just something I, I saw on Twitter. And I think this is one of the big misconceptions about people playing Axies at the moment that they're sort of like, um, you know, they, they, they've swapped one form of sort of capitalist repression for another. Um, and instead of sort of working in the fields, in the paddy fields or something for some terrible wage, now they're just sort of working on their phones and having to work and, and just getting sort of, um, you know, a, a minimum wage and, and coming back and having to do it every day. No, I mean, I think this is really what happens in, in, in crypto is people sort of start out, you know, doing that, or starting out with the scholarship. So they, they don't own their NFTs, they're, they're borrowing their NFTs and, and, and um, you know, grinding out the money and getting 70% back of it. And But then what happens, you know, after for a certain period of time, um, you know, they make their money and then they start saving their money. And do they save their money in fear? No, they start saving it in crypto and then they start going up the crypto ladder. So this is, you know, I, I don't know if this is true, but this lady here, she's been a scholar on Active Infinity for three months. Um, so what, she, what she's done, she's, she's got her own team. So she's, she's basically been able to save enough crypto to buy three axes or get access to three axes. She has now has her own scholars. So she's renting those out to other people who are getting 70% and she's getting, um, she's getting 30% 
Um, she learned about NFTs and, and made a lot of friends and stuff. And so you can kind of see, and this, this, let me talk to Gabby much more about this. You can kind of see people are starting now to have this sort of, you know, people who never had access to credit cards or anything like that are now within within these sort of games being able to earn and and cash out for fiat if they want to or keep it with it and spend it <laughs> um, like fiat or keep it within crypto and, and, and with things like Yield Guild, getting their own tokens there. So the great example Gabby always gives is, you know, p being part of Yield Guild is like being an Uber driver where you get paid to do the, the, the driving and you get stock in Uber, you know. Um, so, so this is very easy, I think, to to, to forget that, that um, you know, this is not pay to earn is is, is you know, the bottom of the ladder. Um, okay, and this sort of stuff, um, so this is just something that came out I thought was interesting. So Yield Guild, obviously, sort of best known. Um, there's loads of other sort of companies who are doing very similar things. So earning owning NFTs in games, particularly Axie Infinity, or really only Axie Infinity at the moment. So they're owning assets, they're renting them out to, to, to scholars, um, and then sort of splitting revenue. So Merit Circle is one of the bigger ones. I mean, there's loads of other ones. There's Blackpool and, and there's... Ones generally uh, have sort of ge geographical sort of areas in which they focus on, so a lot of stuff going on in Venezuela. Some stuff happening in Eastern Europe as well. Um, but 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 um, but it's interesting that Merit Circle, you know, in some degrees are, are competing with Yield Guild and, and some of these other ones as well. Um, but but they're coming to get actually coming together and, and making strategic partnerships because they realise the size of the cake, um, not the size of your slice, is is is, is the thing really at the moment that, that, that everyone has to focus on. You know, this is this is this is really only just starting out. Okay. Uh, Blockchain economies are are more um, equitable, um, so this is you know um, we go a bit quicker now. Uh, we're on time. Um, so you know these things only work when when developers and communities are, are, are fully aligned in terms of incentives. So you know Axie Infinity um, or you know, Skymavis or the token does well. As you say in Axie Infinity when when people are playing the game and enjoying it and and spending time on it and putting to putting token value putting value in there. Um, and then the token value sort of goes up and the NFTs, you know, um, continue to have their value, uh, maybe go up as well. Um, and because everyone is, is in a common um, economy and because it is a, a because it is a circular economy, um, then then everyone, um, you know, gets, uh, you know, is rewarded um, but by, by, by the same success. In fact, you could argue the community, you know, uh, takes the majority of the rewards because the um, the the. Treasury of Axie only gets kind of 4.25%. So, so you just kind of feel, obviously none of these things are perfect, um, um, but, but, but compared to where we are before, where developers get 100%, um, clearly um, there's been a bit of a sea change there in terms of financial incentives. And then when we think about DAOs and things like that in future, um, some, some of the sort of soft, soft community stuff coming in, that then, then that sort of plays again um, into the same thing. Um, uh, I think, you know, um, I mean, <laughs> we've only really started to scratch the surface of, of how you can use blockchain games and, you know, probably... I think the worst example at the moment is everyone everyone looks at Axie Infinity and goes, well, I'm going to make the next Axie Infinity. I mean, that's <laughs> I can guarantee that's the one thing that's not going to work. Um, but, um, you know, particularly we've seen for the last, kind of, you know, 10 years, really, you know, ever since Minecraft, the power of user generated content, so Minecraft now and Roblox, and now there's dozens and dozens, you know, um, every, 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 every week we see new sort of user generated platforms starting up, um, new ways of, you know, no code ways of making games. Um, and, and that kind of stuff's great. Um, but really, you know, the, it needs it needs a payment sort of system where where content creators are, are properly rewarded. I mean, it's the same on social media. You know, it's kind of like if anyone uses YouTube or TikTok or any of those things. Yeah, it's great to have loads of loads of followers and and, and have all that sort of goodwill. Um, but actually, monetizing the stuff is a total pain. Um, and 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 as soon as you have sort of blockchain based systems, that then all that stuff sort of goes away. And and really, um, the people you know, the people who are making this sort of stuff are the ones who who, who get rewarded. Um, and I think that that then um, encourages kind of even more creativity. Um, two reasons you should be investing in blockchain game economies. Um, well, clearly, it goes without saying, a handful of these, of these economies are going to be insanely valuable. You know, they are going to be, um, you know, they're going to be sort of nation state size sort of economies, however you exactly measure the, the economies. Or, you know, I don't know if there's any good examples at the moment, sort of, you know, token market cap or NFT market cap, all this sort of thing. Not, 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 not necessarily a great way of doing it, but um, I think some differences here when it comes to blockchain games. Um, I don't think return on investment is, is everything, but I think it's for a large proportion of the audience, it's going to be a lot of stuff. You know, it'd be interesting when, um, you know, I'm sure at some point a, a new game will launch and it will offer a better return on investment than Axie Infinity. Um, how, how will the Axie Infinity community sort of, sort of flex to that? Um, I, probably, uh, probably quite well, I would think, but, but clearly um, people are going to be, uh, competitive advantage is going to happen <laughs> to some degree around return on investment. Um, and to some degree, the I think you have fewer winners in this sort of scenario because because just money just just works in a different way to to sort of entertainment. Um, in in converse, I think also that um, uh, there's much much better retention rates and, and and 
audiences are much stickier when they have um, sort of skin in the game here. Um, so, so I think that plays into you know, the, the kind of bigger winners here. Um, but equally, I do kind of think, and this is maybe something, you know, for investors to think about. Um, I guess we're always thinking about the big hits. But, but I do think, you know, blockchain does allow you to do some really nice things um, at, at the sort of scale that you wouldn't be able to do um, without them. Clearly, free to play sort of mobile um, requires a very big audience and you, you sort of cherry pick your, your whales out of that. Um, and that's not really good for, for niche games that just don't have a big enough scale for you for, to attract whales. I think, you know, blockchain allows you in a much more creative way to find those, you know, um, you know, whatever it's a thousand true fans or a thousand super fans or whatever they, whatever you want to call them. And I think, you know, people are really committed to a certain sort of um, niche um, topic or, or a niche sort of game um, and, and they put their value in there and that value is sort of part of their community and the developer is alongside that and, and those those things can become incredibly profitable in the long term because as we've seen um, basically a lot of transactional um, you know a lot of value is is being shared um, and the more transactions so the longer time these transactions go on for uh, assuming that the NFT value goes up um, you can start to generate you know quite likeable sums of money that go into the treasury or, or, or the uh, NFT creators um, and I just think blockchain allows allows you to monetize small communities in a much more holistic way um, and I think every, you know the online clearly has has you know cr creates a platform where small communities can sort of um, coalesce and, and, and now you have sort of you know, in, uh, computer money to sort of ha help that stick together. Um, clearly that's going to help those communities become stronger. Okay, I think there are some, some challenges. Um, I think sort of currently, um, this is less than I thought. Um, I was a bit more worried about this hardcore backlash. Um, I still think is a thing. Um, maybe it'll, it'll sort of still grow. Um, I think probably the industry has just moved so quickly in the last couple of months um, that I'm less worried about that really. Um, and I once was scams and failures. Clearly, there's always going to be scams, um, and, and and there'll be a lot of failures, um, and that's that's partly you know human nature and partly inexperience. Um, the over level of uh, oversupply of investment is 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 I don't think. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's clearly not a good thing. I think it encourages. It's going to you know it sort of encourages the scams and failures because because it, sort of anyone can set up and you know I mean. It, just people who, who, who shouldn't be pitching <laughs> but to, to make games are clearly pitching to make games at the moment. Um, there is a massive level of technical uncertainty. So the whole thing, you know, what chain are you running on? You know, no one's got an answer to that. Um, people are choosing that mainly around funding, I think, at the moment. Um, clearly, there are some sort of um, sort of trends in that direction, but it's, it's a lot to do with sort of personal gut feeling there. Um, platform restrictions, Steam, app, app stores, consoles. Uh, we clearly know how, how that's currently set up. Um, how quickly that changes, who knows? Um, 2022, I think a massive supply of opportunities in terms of loads of games, too many games. Um, games will just be not be able to sort of build a big enough audiences to, to, to sort of launch well. Um, I think developers will struggle to be um, not traditional in their approach to their communities. I just think that if you've been making games for 20 years, you just it's very difficult to allow the community to make serious decisions. Um, and maybe you don't need, need to let them make serious decisions, maybe you need to let them make um, trivial decisions but that feel serious I don't know uh, but but there are not major stuff like DAOs really in communities I mean that's 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 the next 20 years of games how DAOs feed into all this sort of stuff I mean the blockchain bit is just a, it's just a payment route the, the 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 community building DAO type stuff is, is the really fascinating psychological thing I think but developers are going to struggle with that and that's why I think still think um, you know the really the sort of next act is still come from the crypto space rather than the gaming space but I'm happy to be proven wrong on that um, economies will just collapse all the time because that's just what they're going to do and clearly, going to be lots of regulatory uh, legal pressure, um, um, and and you know yeah, that's just going to sort of go with the territory. So so 99% will fail, probably more than that. Um, this is a feature. This is not a bug. The stuff we're building is stuff that could never be built before, and the fact that it's building, the fact that it's hard to build, <laughs> is is the fact that it's significant and it's changing the world. Um, and that's of course why we should all be um, in this in this space. Um, so yeah, thanks thanks for that. Um, any questions? Um, yeah. Uh, Please give me your questions.